It's finally happening. This is the video where I'm gonna finish this model and... I don't know. Keep watching and you'll see. But I'm really stoked because finishing a model means you can start a new one. And there's also a huge, super mega important update at the end of this video. I just wanted to let you know about that as well. Okay, let's finish this thing. First I need to fix the running gear in place because right now it's all wobbly and I won't be able to attach the tracks if the bogies keep falling off. This was done by applying small amounts of liquid cement on the bogies from the lower side and then pressing them against the swing arms. Unfortunately this had a nasty side effect. The glue melted the paint and the plastic inside which then spewed out creating these black blobs. I'll fix these ASAP, but first let me put on the tracks. Attaching workable tracks is always a fiddly job and this wasn't an exception. Turns out filming it is even harder, so using the magic of post-production and quick cuts will skip forward in time so we can endure the assembled model. One thing that can totally destroy the overall impression of your model is when the road wheels don't touch the ground. This is a problem with a lot of my models. I guess uh, I'm just clumsy. Um, anyway, make sure you align them as best as possible before the glue has time to fully dry. Now we can start those micro adjustments that are so enjoyable. I mean, most of them. First task, paint this visible copper wire. This one is pretty easy. Next. Cover the spilt paint slash molten plastic slash glue on the bogies. This is one of those situations when weathering saves the day, but truth be told, it doesn't feel artificial or unnatural. It's just a typical spot where dust and dried mud would naturally appear. Simple and effective. Alright, this one is an interesting one. We're done fixing mistakes and it's time to apply some final effects that usually give the model that Mm. Here I'm adding small amounts of rust that forms on lower parts of the road wheels on abandoned tanks. Or just tanks that haven't been used in quite some time. This is actually something that I would never come up by myself and I stumbled across this effect by accident when mindlessly browsing my weathering reference collection and it was a photo of abandoned Chieftain MK11 by the way. And when you think about it for a second it makes perfect sense. This is where rainwater collects in pools and stays for a long time and thus creates small spots of heavy rust. If I noticed this before, I would definitely create this effect much earlier, but there's nothing bad about doing it as one of the finishing touches. Gotta be honest, I wasn't a fan of the result at first, but it just grows on you. Next refining touch, applying another layer of wash. After we apply all the rust, dust and mud effects on our model, some of those nice contrasting washes will get toned down. This is not an issue and in fact is desired in most cases, but in places like around hatches and movable parts, it's quite the opposite. Those fine panel lines represent deep gaps in real life, which naturally cast deep and dark shadows and no amount of dust will change that. So, obviously, we have to regain some of that lost contrast by adding another layer of wash and carefully blending it. Next step, exhaust stains. Well, these are not exactly stains, but you know what I mean. Most of the time I choose the quickest and most efficient way to perform this task and surprisingly, it's pigments. Night shift and pigments. <laughs> And some people still believe Avengers Infinity War is the most ambitious crossover. Anyway, some of that soot starts running down over time and in this case I prefer oil paint mixed with a bit of pigment for extra texture. This effect has to be subtle, except if, of course, you're modeling a Soviet tank. Then it definitely, most positively, cannot be subtle. Next. Turret rings are very popular places where large quantities of dirt like to hang out. 
I however am not the biggest fan of going overboard with grime effects and even if I were, the effect wouldn't fit with the theme of this model. So instead I decided to add very subtle grime using the speckling method. When creating this effect it's advisable to check the effect with the turret attached. This way you'll get a much better idea about what you're actually doing and if it's too much or not enough. The product I'm using has a very distinct dark green tint which can be used to simulate moss and all the rotting stuff found on abandoned vehicles. But despite all of that I fought the temptation, or we can say I just chickened out. And didn't go that far. I think this is just the right amount of contrast between the upper hull and the turret. Next, even though I was shy with the amount of grime around the turret ring, here at the back I felt the exact opposite. Unshy. This is because I just love stuff that's leaking from stuff. Although I wasn't exactly sure if those are fuel tank filler caps or they were filled with oil, I just didn't research that far, I'm still sure something was being poured down those things. And you know, if you don't go totally overboard with effects like this, your model will look only better, never worse. I intentionally chose a wash and not a dedicated fuel or oil stain product which are glossy. I wanted something that would look more faded, hence the matte diluted wash. And yeah, I think it totally looks the part, and now those filler caps are subtly distinguished from the rest of the engine deck. Next, I mean last but not least, the real tank had wooden wedges stuck between its road wheels. I guess to make sure it didn't run off. I decided to make those from some hardwood offcuts I found in my stash. I didn't realize hardwood is, well, it's hard, and therefore pretty tough to cut by hand. Both my razor saw and not razor saw failed, and I had to cut it with my off-brand Dremel tool which was done off-screen, but this is the result. Another thing I did off-screen was to chop those pieces into wedges with my hobby blade, and what you're seeing is a pretty close artistic representation of that process. Then I found some use for the knot razor saw and scribed in some wood grain texture, which was then randomly enhanced with the hobby blade. Then I gave them a coat of primer, and this is gonna be another unorthodox method, airbrushed them with flat white Tamiya paint. I learned this technique from John Tolcher, gotta give credit where credit is due, then gave each wedge a wash from diluted black acrylic paint to bring out the texture and to also create a neutral grayish surface and then covered each piece with filters and washes made from both acrylics and enamels. The reason why I'm doing things like this is simple. Using real wood allows us to create a pretty authentic texture, but I think it's only good for that. I don't like painting a real wood the traditional way, like, you know, using its natural color as a base color and then just adding some dark brown washes mixed from oil paints. And also, and this is not a well known fact, old wood is not brown or dark brown or anything like that, but rather dark grey-ish. I normally go with more dark grey mixed with dark green finish to capture that distinct rotting wood texture, but it again wouldn't fit with the light colored dusty theme of this model. Anyway, if you're intrigued by this technique, let me know in the comments because something tells me this could work as a standalone weathering tutorial. Let's now put them in place. One more, and we're done. We did it! We actually did it! We like me and all of you, together! I'm so happy this model is finally done, and even happier that so many of you decided to drop by each week and watch how this thing progressed. Thank you, thank you all so much! And you know what this means? When you finish a model, what you're gonna do? Yup, start working on another model. But before we get to that, let's do a short recap of everything this model went through. 
Obviously the first step was to apply the base color, then some distressing which didn't quite work out, then there were those custom stencils made by Solid Scale, thanks again Alex, then a coat of semi-gloss varnish, then some blended oil paints, washes, forced contrast aka ambient occlusion in analog 3D modeling, first layer of light color chipping, light speckling, second layer of dark rusty steel chipping, weld bead chipping, yeah that's a lot of chipping, some rust tones, streaking effects, then there was the exhaust, dried mud, dust, tracks, and then all of these small finishing touches. Quite a lot of work if you ask me, but hey, 35 scale models are like this, they're big and give us a lot of room to play around. The downside is, it takes time. Ok, now there are a few important things I wanted to tell you. My daily job gets very busy in autumn and winter. This is already going on because it always starts in September and ends with Christmas holidays. So I'll be extremely busy and most likely won't have tons of time for models or videos. Don't worry, I'm not abandoning you or anything like that, it just, it's possible that I won't be able to upload a new video every single week, because sometimes there just won't be a new video to upload. I'm not saying this is gonna be a new routine, it's just a heads up that something like this might happen. So if it's Friday and you don't see a new video, this is why. And I'll most definitely let you know by posting about it in my community section. Another thing. I teased you with that panther kit I received from Das Werk. Well, I won't build that anytime soon because of the reasons I mentioned. Instead I'll focus on a few smaller models that are easier and faster to paint, you know, to compensate for my lack of time. And I'll probably make a few more tips, tricks and tutorial videos as well because I have a lot of interesting ideas for those. So again, maybe I'll be able to upload 3 videos in November or 2 videos in December, I don't know, maybe I won't miss a single week, but if I do I sincerely apologize in advance. And I can assure you we'll be back to regular upload schedule in January, which is probably when I'll get to build another full blown 35th scale tank, most likely that panther. In other news, I'm also thinking about setting up a Patreon page. A few people asked about it and to be honest I didn't have time to set it up, although I already have a pretty clear idea about the whole thing. Let's just say it would allow you guys to get more night shift experience. So even if my weekly upload schedule might get slightly compromised in the upcoming two months, you'd be able to get some type of content on, dare I say, daily basis. And not just content, but other stuff as well. Please let me know in the comments if you'd be interested. I think all of that sounds pretty tasty, so yeah, let me know. Ok, that's all I wanted to tell you today, or tonight. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you mates in the next one, aka next week. Don't worry, I still have several videos to post. For now. Ok, bye.